Australia has retained the ashes, while England retained the title of whingiest nation on the planet. Honours <laughs> kind of even, I, I would have thought. <laughs> At first, Kerry O'Keefe, uh, the retaining of the ashes in the method with the rain wasn't completely convinced by, but when the pile-up of whinging happened, it just feels like there wouldn't have been a more um, perfect way. If whinging was an Olympic event, Everybody's competing for the silver. Yes. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Uh, look, when you board the plane to go to England for Ashes, you, you are, your, own, your only goal is to retain or regain. I, I only did one Ashes tour in 1977, and, it, and a, a mascot, we decided we were retaining or regain. That was our goal. But when, got, when we got off at Heathrow, Rod Marsh had drunk 45 cans <laughs> and Doug Wallace had drunk 42 and the rest of us were completely munted. <laughs> and we'd forgotten our goal. <laughs> and we lost 3 <laughs> 0. But this team didn't. And full credit to them. They led 2 0 after two uh, and Basball was smashed. Was it smashed? I mean, because there's obviously some positives that are coming at it from me. In fact, baseball is part of that, is that all they see is the positives. They thought they were up 2-0 from yeah. the beginning. But they, at, you know, that running at seven runs and over for over 500, that's pretty entertaining cricket. It is. And, and this is where Ben Stokes, it, he wears a bucket hat. A bucket hat says fun. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't worry about losing wickets. It doesn't worry about losing matches. Our legacy is to entertain. Well, I'm sorry, Ben. We go over... We, you know, you are the Harlem Globetrotters. Yeah. You're an entertainer, but we're there to win the Ashes, and we've retained them. What do you um, think yeah. of some of Stokes' comments? Um, because some people are saying that he's coming across as smug, not just him, but the mm. entire English team. Yeah, I've been... I think his press conferences have been bad. I mean, he's made a lot of mistakes. The, the declarations, they've dropped catches. They haven't attended to the, the dotting the I's and crossing the T's. And that's what Australia has done well. They won the clutch moments at Edgbaston and Lords. They led 2-0. And, and then Ben Stokes said, oh, perfect. 2-0 down, 3 to play. I'm sorry, Ben. There'll be weather will be a factor in at least one, maybe two of them. Scott, can they sustain this? Like, will they have to change their tactics... Because they've lost the Ashes, right? Yeah. So oh, they won't. No. Nah. But it's a man uh, Fletch, it's a manufactured thing, Basball. It depends totally on a flat pitch, yeah. which Ben Stokes ordered and were produced by the curators. Because you've got to play high-risk strokes. You've got to take risk when you bat. And they've been able to get away with it a couple of times because of the nature of the pitch. Uh, I feel sorry for English cricket if Basball wins. Because if I'm a potential England player... Um, there's only one way they'll want me to play. I, I want to play hard-nosed five-day test cricket for my country. I don't want to get, get, go out there and just look to slap the ball on the up from the outset. Yeah. Scott, what about... Uh, as entertaining as it is. Yeah, it is, yeah that's right. So 6pm they pull stumps, so it doesn't yeah. get dark till 10pm. No. So based on that, the time frame they needed and extending that for light, what's your thoughts? They should do it. Ben, because, you know, slow over rates are the bane of test cricket. Australia's been fined dock points in the test championship. Um, you can extend play. Get the overs bowl so that every captain knows we're going to have to bowl the full amount of overs every day. Yeah. Uh, at the moment, they... they they bowl a ridiculously slow over rate and get away with it. But well, when, when a result is decided by weather like that, there's only really one logical conclusion, which is that God likes Australia more than he likes England. <laughs> <laughs> well, move it from England. Move it from England. And play over there. <laughs> Absolutely. And we're good in water. <laughs> but they would have seen the forecast just as everyone else did. Yeah. And were you surprised... Uh, with the declaration and when they did declare? Oh, look, he, he, Ben Stokes must have known weather was coming. Lunch day three, they led by 189. He said, we'll chase in fourth innings. We don't mind that. He had to have a real go at Australia that afternoon, but he was enjoying Johnny Bairstow <laughs> bashing us up. Mm. So he extended the lead to 275, only took four wickets that afternoon, which was three short of what he might have taken had he yep. declared at lunch. And, of course, rain then became a factor. Yeah. But we're good in water, aren't we? <laughs> we are. I mean, 17 gold medals at the last Olympics, 15 in the water. <laughs> the moment water's around, we're winners. <laughs>
I guess the, the victory within that washout uh, has got sweeter with every Piers Morgan tweet. Oh. Uh, just been loving it. This is the start of his. You can read. Has there ever been a less deserved retention of the Ashes? Honestly, Piers. Oh. He's loving this, isn't yeah. he? He's loving the reaction from everyone. But I mean, that was just comical. Yeah, I like him and Merva going at it. Have you, oh, been, yes. have you been following that? Why is Merv engaging him? Well, I mean, that's what he wants. Well, right, I hope he does. It's really oh, good. Really? Well, we just need to see Brett Lee bowl, bowl at him again. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no, even worse, he has to sing. <laughs> <laughs> so Bolly, well, he has to sing all the uh, so that, that really Up front of six and yes. out, that would be great. <laughs> Pat Cummins uh, didn't have his greatest test as a bowler and as a captain, really. Uh, taking catches away to patrol the boundaries. England, of course, were plundering them as we expect. Uh, sold going at seven and over. Make those moves and suddenly the ball goes to exactly where you feel was. What did you make of it? Because there's a quite a loud clamour now around this, isn't there, about Pat Cummins and his position. That's the old thing about the you know, fast bowler being the captain. He's a standout leader. He, he's our best alternative. Um, he's a statesman. He's, he's orchestrated the culture of this team. The only alternative is Mitch Marsh, who could captain. Good bloke. Um, uh, but not a lock in the team and injury prone. What about someone like a Travis Head, though? Yeah, I don't think... I don't see leader there. Mm -hmm. uh, I, Pat is the best alternative. The thing is, 90% of test captaincy or cricket is routine. Yeah. The other 10% is made up of man management, working out strategies and tactics when it's going against you, which Pat hasn't, is learning but isn't good at, and and being able to use your spinner appropriately, which he's still not very good at. There are aspects of his captaincy which need attention, but he is the best option. So, based on that, is it what needs the immediate address in terms of what he's not good at? Well, th those fields that were set on day three, he, he did have a shocker. Yeah. I mean, um, he, Ian Chappell would say, I don't set fields for bad bowling. And it's a, it's a mantra that should carry on to today. I know that was 50 years ago. He set fields for bad bowling and Australia bowled bad. Yeah. Instead of setting a field which Australia through Mitch Stark, Hazelwood and himself set two or three slips in a gully, bowl full and, and pack the offside. And they'll nick. And they have done for years. They've been the base of our victory for so long. Suddenly we've got eight men on the boundary and we're bowling half trackers. I don't get it. It will be David Warner's last test in England at the Oval, but according to former England captain Michael Vaughan, the rumour mill has both he and Steve Smith finishing their test careers at the Oval. Here he is on Fox Cricket's Ashes preview show. The whisper was, and I, I have no idea where they're getting this uh, whisper, but that Warner, if he plays at the Oval, it'll probably be his last. Again, I'm not too sure where they've got that. Uh, and, and, you know, a quite a strong whisper was about Steve Smith, that it could be his uh, last time out. For Australia at the over as well. Again, yes. I, I've wow. not seen that personally. I've not seen that personally. Fortunately, we have our David Warner correspondent. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that's just Vaughney trying to get a headline. Yeah. Um, mm. If David's going to retire, I haven't heard anything, but I'm pretty sure he made it clear at the start of the series that if he can and if he's playing good enough cricket, Sydney will be his last. So I, I, I thought that he put that to bed a month or so ago. In regards to Steve Smith, who knows? He's he's one of those players that plays one series at a time. He never alludes to too much in the future. So, who knows? But and, I uh, do know that the ne he, he probably won't play another Ashes tour away. He'll be 38 by the time yeah. that rolls around. So, who knows? The he, English crowds have been beastly to him and Steve Smith mm. for four or five years now. I'm very interested in the reaction at the Oval when they both walk off for the last time in England. Will the, the Oval crowd rise to them, as they did Smith in 2019, to accept that this has been a dangerous opponent for a number of Ashes series? Or will they continue to boo and... and, and that would be so great if they do exactly that. Uh, I'd like to get your thoughts on it, because what they've done so far was more like this. Have, have a look. This is reminding him that he's no longer captain. Right, that is as nasty as Lords at the Oval. They're a mocking crowd, aren't they? They're no, they're like the members. Mm. We saw those oh. uh, hyphenated dudes come out. And <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Are they oh. as... No, I mean, the, 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 the alcohol reigns at England cricket grounds yeah. and they disrespect the opposition. It's a soccer crowd. It's not the Barmy Army. It's a soccer crowd mentality there now. 
And that's why I've been so disappointed in the crowds. They've mocked Steve Smith forever. They sing song. We saw you crying on the telly. Yeah. Um, they give Dave a hard time. Does that affect I, him, Candice? Has, does no. It no. To Dave, no. Um, but I'm sure some plays it does. We've seen uh, Mitch Johnson in the past when they sung about him. Yeah. It, it got into his head. Mm. But um, with David, not so much. And David tends to play around with the Barmy Army and things like that. But the stuff that I did notice was... The Barmy Army of the past used to be really clever in what they used to sing and, yep. and, and it was really quite um, amusing. Now it's kind of just a bit long in the tooth, a little bit boring what they're singing. We've heard it all before. Come up with something new. Yeah. Does he give you an insight into the game plan of sledging? Like, does he say, uh, these are the four that don't respond to a good sledge? Do you know internally um, from an England perspective? No, no, I don't. Um, in, but in regards to Dave, I mean, he cops it everywhere he goes. And so <laughs> yeah. what he's found, he just plays up to the crowd. So I think it was Edge Baston, he went around, you know, he goes on the boundaries and, and plays up with them. And, and they applaud that. They actually like when he gets involved and sort of gives them a bit of banter back. But every player is different in regards to how they deal with it and yeah. if it affects them or not.